Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter and today I have this cute and comfy crochet top pattern to share with you guys. Um, I used Line Brent's 24-7 cotton in the DK weight and this is my first time using this yarn and I am obsessed with it. You guys are going to love it. It is so soft, it's so drapey, it just turned out so amazing. Um, so be prepared for a lot more patterns with this yarn coming up this summer because that's how much I love it. Um, okay, so here's the top. It's got these cute little side slits here along the edge. You can keep those in or you can sew all the way down if you want to as well. Um, it's got a V-neck shape here on the neckline. And then short sleeves and I did a little roll on the end. I think it looks super cute like that. And it's also very drapey and loose. Perfect for summer. Got this oversized fit and then the stitch that we use and the hook that I combine with it um, gives it a very like open meshy look to it. You might recognize this stitch as the one that I used in my mountain sunrise throw. And we're also gonna be using an oversized or a larger hook for this pattern um, as well to give it that meshy look to it. So we're gonna be using a six millimeter hook with the DK weight yarn and it works up very fast. Um, you can find this available as a line brand kit on their website and the kit comes with all the yarn you need to make your top and for the size that you're going to make and then they throw in a free copy of my pattern. Um, it'll come as a digital link and then you can print it out. It's the printable PDF version. And then you can also change your yarn color as well. So if you don't wanna do the same color as me, you can switch it up. They have lots of cute colors. Um, and then it's also um, frequently at a discounted price, so I will make sure I share that with you guys. If you are subscribed to my newsletter, then I will send out an email and let you know when they have a good sale, like 35% off, because then you're getting the discounted yarn, plus a free pattern, and it's a really good deal. So if you wanna try out this yarn, I recommend getting the kit. So I will link that in the description. And then the pattern is also free on my blog, as always, so when you're making this top, I recommend recommend to follow along with the free pattern just go ahead and open it up on my blog um, especially if you're making another size this has nine different sizes extra small through 5x I am making a size small in the video but depending on what size you're making you'll have to adjust your stitch count or row count or whatever it'll be different for each size so just make sure you are aware of that um, it's constructed by separate panels, so you'll make a front back panel, a back panel, and then two um, sleeve panels, and then seam it together. Um, they're worked from the bottom up. It's all the same stitch. You'll just add a simple little trim at the neckline here when you're done. Um, so it's very, very easy, very beginner friendly, and I think that's everything you need to know. Just make sure that when you are uh, working the stitches do not pull the chain ones tightly you don't want super tight um, stitches for this we want it to be like loose and flowy and mesh that's why we're using the larger hook so if you are prone to having a very tight tension you might need to um, go up in your hook size or just be really aware as you're going to not um, aggressively pull your stitches down too tightly I also wanted to point out that this is a uh, very stretchy stitch and top, so the lengths listed in the size chart that I provide, when you put this top on, it'll stretch um, maybe about three to six inches longer than what is listed on there. Um, so when you have your panel laying flat and you're measuring to check all of that, um, <clears throat> it'll come out shorter than what it's going to be when you wear it. So I have the size uh, listed in the size chart of when it's laying flat and measuring it flat, but when you wear it and actually put it on, the weight of the yarn and the stitch pulls it down and it adds a few inches to it. Um, so just be aware of that as well. I like mine to be big and oversized and I like the look of it being longer, but if you wanted to make adjustments to it, you can easily add or remove as many rows as you want. So when you're making the back panel and you decide that you want it to be a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, once you hold it up, when you hold the panel, you'll see what I mean, how it stretches down um, and you can hold it up to yourself. And then if you like that length, then you're good to go. But if you want it to be shorter or longer, just add or remove as many rows as you want and then do the same to the front panel as well, right before you start splitting for the neckline here. So right, um, right before we 
do the shaping at this point, you'll want to add the same amount of rows or remove the same amount of rows as you did on the back panel. So that is how you adjust the length for it. And then other than that, I think that is all you need to know for this design. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And then as always, I appreciate the support and I will catch you guys in the next video. So for this project, you're going to need some lightweight yarn. I'm using Line Brand's 24-7 Cotton DK in the color Cacao. And all of the exact yardage for all of the sizes that I provide are available on my blog post. So make sure you go check that out for all the exact yardage and links to the yarn as well. And then you're also going to need a six millimeter crochet hook, a needle, a pair of scissors, and then a few stitch markers as well. So both the back panel and the front panel start off exactly the same. And if you're following the written pattern, we are starting off with the back panel. So we're gonna go ahead and take our yarn and then just create a slip knot with it. So wrap your yarn around your fingers, pull it through, and then pull the strand all the way down tightly to secure to your hook. And now we will be starting with some chains. So to work your chain, you're just going to yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through over and over again until you have the correct amount of chains for your size. Making a size small, so I'll be making 91 chains. Make sure while you're doing your chains, you are not pulling it too tightly. You do not want a tight tension with this top, so just make sure you're holding an even tension as you go. So I have 91 chains now, and we're gonna work our way back down for row one. So we're going to be putting our hook into the third chain from the hook. So skip over the first two. And then in that following chain, the third chain is where we're going to be putting our hook for this very first stitch. And you can insert your hook wherever you want. I find that it looks the most neat when you put your hook in the back bump of the chain. So that's what I'm going to recommend doing here. So rotate it slightly and insert your hook into the back bump of the third chain. Yarn over and pull up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. And then we're going to go directly into the chain after that one in the back bump yarn over and pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook. And then you're going to yarn over, pull through the first two loops only, and then yarn over, pull through the final two loops. And then we are going to chain one. And in this pattern, that chain one does count as a stitch. So when you're counting your stitch count, make sure you include that chain one as a stitch. So go ahead and put your hook into the following bump. We're not skipping any chains here. Yarn over, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the bump after that. Yarn over, pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. And then again, chain one. And we're just gonna continue with this all the way across the row. So making sure not to skip any chains, insert your hook into the next bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then into the following, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and chain one. And as you're going, make sure that you do not pull your chains tightly. We wanna keep a loose and even tension. It's very important for this pattern because um, we are using this oversized hook to give it more of a mesh feel to it. So we want loose stitches, not too loose. You wanna make sure that you're just keeping it even. So don't tug down on your chains if you're prone to really working your tension tightly. Just try and be aware of that and try and keep it as even as possible as you go. So work your stitches across and I will meet you at the end of this row to show you how to complete it. Okay, so now we are at the end of row one and I have three chains left. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish um, working my stitches. So insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert my hook into the following, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Do not forget your chain one here. So make sure you do that last chain one and then you're going to finish with a single crochet into that very last chain. So just insert your hook and then yarn over, pull up a loop. And then yarn over, pull through both loops and that's one single crochet for your last stitch of the row. So my final stitch count for row one is 89 stitches. Remember that chain one space does count as a stitch, but the chain twos at the beginning of the row here do not count as a stitch. So we chained two and turned our work and we're gonna start row two. This chain two does not count as a stitch, so we're gonna begin by putting our hook into the very first stitch of the row, which was the single crochet that we made at the end of row one. 
and we're just going to be doing exactly what we did but now we're working into chains spaces and into stitches so insert your hook into that first stitch yarn over pull up a loop insert your hook into the chain one space yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two chain one so work it just as before into the stitch and put your hook and into the chain one space as well. So when you're working it into the chain one, you're putting it into the actual space and not into the chain. So you can just put your hook into that space, not into the actual chain um, that we made in the previous row. And you'll do this throughout the pattern when you're working into the chain ones. Just remember it's into the chain one space and not into the actual chain one stitch. It's a lot easier to just stick it into the space. And then we're just doing the same thing that we did in the previous row, except instead of working it into the starting chain, we're now working it into the previous row. So insert hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, chain one. Again, just keep your tension loose. Try not to tug down tightly on those chains. Um, so just try and keep it consistent as you go. You might feel like your stitches look a little bit loose and that's normal because we're using a larger hook than what is called for for this yarn. So just keep going. And then from this point on, our stitch count here is not going to change. We are just going to be um, keeping it at 89 stitches, at least for the size small, and just working back and forth in rows, repeating row two throughout. So work your way down and I'll show you how to finish off row two. So when you get to the end here, I've finished um, my stitches and I have ended on that chain one. Don't forget the chain one. And then just work a single crochet into the top of the last stitch of the previous row and then chain two. Again, my stitch count is 89 stitches. And then we're just going to repeat this row that we just did over and over and over again until we have the correct row amount of rows for our size. So for the size small, I'm going to be making 59 rows. And you can easily adjust this if you want a longer top or a shorter top. Um, feel free to make as many or as little rows as you want and make your adjustments. Just take into account you will have um, a different yardage requirement. So if you purchased the kit, you um, will want to be aware of that, that it only comes with the correct amount of yarn that I have written within the pattern. Um, so just repeat row two until you have the right amount of rows for your size. And then I will meet you back here when we're done with our back panel. Okay, so the back panel is complete. I have 59 rows. I'm just gonna fasten off and set it aside. And once you have that, you need to go back and remake rows one through 46 that we just did on the back panel. Repeat that for the front panel. So rows one through 46 and then stop because we're going to do some shaping for the front panel. Okay, so now I'm on row 47 of the front panel here and we're gonna stop when we only have worked partially across so that we can make the neckline and shoulder shaping. This is where we're splitting the neckline, which is row 47. And I've already finished this row 47, but I'm gonna pull out these last couple stitches so you can see what to do. You just work your way across like normal. So um, just as you been, have been doing with all the previous rows, work your way across, but only a certain amount of stitches. So make sure you're following with the written pattern. So for this size small in row 47, I worked 42 stitches across. Don't forget that chain one at the end and it does count as a stitch. All the chain one spaces count. And then you're just gonna finish the row like normal by putting your hook into the next stitch and working a single crochet. So I did 42 across and then I finished with a single crochet into the next stitch, kind of pretending like it's the last stitch of the row for a total of 43 stitches. And then we just chain two and turn our work like normal. So we have 43 stitches for row 47 and now we're going to work our way back across this row like normal. So we're not gonna start um, the decreasing yet. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that we're just putting it in the hook like normal and into the next chain space like normal. Work your stitch just like that and then chain one and continue across the row. So this row for row 48 is also gonna have 43 stitches. So this is a, an exact same row that you've been doing 
um, and all the rest of the rows of this panel. So go ahead and work your way across. You'll have a total of 43 stitches for row 48. And this is the right shoulder, which is the left shoulder when you are wearing it. So left shoulder when worn, this is what we are making. Go ahead and work your way down and then do the same row um, and stitch repeat on the way back. And this is the end of row 49 here. And you can see we have three stitches left in row 49. Insert your hook into the next stitch and in the chain space, work your stitch like normal, except now for the decreasing, we are not going to be chaining one. So skip that chain one and just work your single crochet into the last stitch. So no chain one at the end of this row for row 49. And now you've decreased to 42 stitches. And then just turn your work, chain two. And this is how you do the other decrease row here. And this is what you'll be repeating these two rows to continue decreasing. You're going to skip over that first stitch and put your hook into the next stitch and your hook into the next chain space. So that's all we did was chain two, skip the first stitch, and then just work your stitches like normal. So again, just continue with your stitches across the row. The rest of the row is the same as it was before. And this is row 50 here. And now you will have a total of 41 stitches for the end of this row. So each row we decrease by one stitch. So work your way down to finished row 50 and then chain two and turn and work your way back for row 51. And I'll meet you back on the other end. So here we are at the end of row 51. And again, I have three stitches remaining. So we're gonna do the same thing to do our decrease here. So insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the chain space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Do not chain one and just finish with a single crochet in the last stitch. That decreases us by one stitch. Then chain two and turn your work and just continue to repeat the two rows for the decreasing. So rows 49 and 50 is what you'll be doing. Again, skip that first stitch and continue with your st stitch repeat like normal after skipping that first stitch. So for the size small, I'm gonna do this until I have a total of 59 rows, just like I have for the back panel. So we had rows 51 through 59. You're just repeating rows 49 and 50, continuing to decrease by one stitch as you go. And then we will be finishing off on row 59, which is a row 49 repeat. And you should have a total of 32 stitches for the size small. But again, you'll have a different amount of stitches depending on what size you're making. Okay, so we have our first shoulder done. This is what it looks like. I have a total of 59 rows that I'm just gonna fasten off and I'm gonna leave a long enough tail so that I can sew this last row to my back panel. So make sure you do that as well. You have to do the other side. Lay your top out in front of you with the finished panel on the right hand side and you're gonna skip over three stitches here at the center neckline. So the chain space, the top of the stitch and the next chain space, you're gonna skip over that and then insert your hook into the very next stitch. So we have three unworked stitches in the middle of the neckline. Just make sure you are aware of that and then slip stitch to join. And now we're going to start our row just like normal by chaining two. And then in the first stitch is where you're gonna insert your hook, same as the chain, and then insert your hook into the next chain one space, complete your stitch like normal, chain one, and you're just going to work your way across the row with your regular stitch repeat all the way across for row 47 here um, of the opposite shoulder, which is the right shoulder when you're wearing the sweater. So just work your way across. For row 47, you'll have a total of 43 stitches, just like you do on the um, same row on the other side. Chain two, work your way back like normal for row 48. And then when you get to the last three stitches, you're going to finish it off by inserting your hook into the next stitch, yarning over, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the chain one space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, but then do not chain one. So same as before on the other side, do not do your chain one here. 
and then just finish with a single crochet into the last stitch. And you'll notice that we're starting our decreases one row earlier than we do on the other side. That is normal. That is what we are supposed to be doing. So don't worry if you see that the stitch count is off by one compared to the other shoulder. Um, that is how it worked out for this design, how we have to do it. So just be aware of that as well. we we'll are start just our decreases are opposite. Um, so then chain two, skip that first single crochet just like we have before, and then put your hook into the following stitch and work your stitches like normal. Don't forget to chain one here and just work your way across for row 49. You will have a total of 41 stitches. And then you are just going to be repeating the last two rows that I showed you, rows 48 and 49. Repeat that until you have a total of 58 rows. So again, this is gonna be slightly different than the first shoulder because our decreases are flipped or opposite. So go ahead and work rows 50 through 58, repeating rows 48 and 49, which is just the last two rows I showed you where we decrease by one with each stitch. So it's the same as the first side, just opposite. So you can see here, I have a total of 58 rows and now we need to do one final row to finish off this opposite shoulder. So right now we have a total of 32 stitches. We just finished a row 48 repeat. And now you can see that we chain two and instead of skipping this first stitch, you want to work a single crochet into that first stitch. That's gonna be the difference here. And then insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the chain space, pull up a loop, and work your stitches like normal. So all we did different here for row 59 was that we started with a single crochet into the very first stitch of the row so that we could have the right amount of stitches which is the same on the other side for a total of 32 stitches. So now both sides have 59 rows and both sides have 32 stitches for the size small. So then you can just fasten off. Again, you wanna leave a long tail so you can sew the last row to the back panel. Next, you need to make two sleeve panels, which is what I have here. I'm not gonna show you how to do it because it's exactly the same for the back panel and the front panel. The sleeves are exactly the same. You just have a shorter starting chain. So for the size small, I chained a total of 53. Then I just worked my rows like normal. The row one is the same. And then you just repeat row two until you have a total of 17 rows for the size small. And again, if you're making a different size, that row count will be different and same with the starting chain. So make sure you pay attention to that. Check the starting chain count and the row count for your size, and then go ahead and make two panels for the sleeves. Okay, at this point you should have the back panel, the front panel, and two sleeve panels complete. And now we're gonna do the assembly. So you wanna lay your back panel down with the right side facing up, and then take your front panel and lay it on top with the right side facing down. So the right sides are facing, and the right side for this pattern is row one. So when you're looking at row one correctly, that is the right side of the panel that you are looking at. Um, but it really doesn't matter too much for this pattern if you decide that you want it to be the other side to be the right side, that's fine too. Um, so just make sure that the right side that you pick is the same for both panels um, before we get to seaming. And for this part, I used the tail that I had left on the front panel on both sides, that long tail that we left. I used that to seam the last row of both shoulders of the front panel to the back panel. And I like to slip stitch this across here with my hook, but you can also use a needle and sew across. You can do whatever seaming method you prefer to do. I know everyone has their preferences. So you can use your needle, you can do a invisible join, a mattress stitch, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna do the slip stitch here. So I just put my hook into the last stitch of each row and I use that tail of yarn and slip stitch to join. And then I line it up and put my hook into the next stitch or chain space. 
um, and slip stitch through both panels and through the loop on my hook to join just working across as I go. Make sure you don't skip any stitches. Make sure your panels are nice and even um, so that the stitching is even and you get the correct amount of stitches joined. So just work your way across. When you get to the end of the row of the front panel, just fasten off and then you need to repeat that same thing on the other side. Um, just slip stitch that last row of the front panel to the back panel as well. And then I will meet you back here and show you how to join in the sleeves. Okay, so now I have my front and back panel laying out in front of me. The wrong side is facing up right now. And we are gonna take our sleeve and attach it to the side to join in as well. So make sure you have the last row made is where you're going to be attaching to the front and back panel. So when you fasten off from the sleeves, if you left a long tail, you can use that to sew the sleeve to the front and back panel. And you wanna make sure that again, the right sides and the wrong sides are the same way for all of these panels. So when we fold it together to seam across, we have the right sides facing. But first I'm gonna show you how to join in with stitch markers and keep it nice and secure. You wanna make sure that this middle seam here at the shoulder is in the center stitch of the sleeve. So you make sure that it's lined up directly so that um, you have the same amount of stitches on either side of the shoulder seam and then you can use your stitch markers and put it in place. You also want to make sure that the start of the sleeve and the end of the sleeve is down the same amount of rows on the front panel as is the back panel just so that everything is nice and even. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did for my shoulders and just slip stitch across. So I'm just putting my hook into the very first stitch of the sleeve and then putting my hook directly across into the panel and then slip stitching to join. So make sure you don't skip any stitches of the sleeve here and just work it directly across into the panel. You can remove your stitch markers as you go and then just fasten off when you get to the end and repeat the same exact thing on the opposite side. So now we need to seam the um, sides of the sleeve together as well as the side of the top. So if you have enough yarn left over from where you joined the sleeve in, you could use that same tail and seam down the side, which is what I did. And I also left a slit in the side of my top as well. So I left about six inches on both sides and just left it unseamed and then fastened off and repeat on the other side. And then also make sure you join the sides of your sleeves as well, doing the same exact process that we did everywhere else for seaming. And then once you have everything joined, you can fold the little cuff up on the sleeve and you can sew on the inside if you want. Um, to tack that cuff down or that fold down just so it doesn't flop, but you don't have to. You can leave it um, so you can roll it or unroll it. And then now we just have to add in the neckline trim. So our top is right side facing out right now. And I took a new piece of yarn and I'm just joining it um, at the shoulder seam on the right hand side of the shirt with a slip stitch. And then I chain one and then I worked a single crochet into the same spot. And then I'm just going to single crochet evenly around the opening of the neckline. So you're just working into the sides of the rows here for the decrease. Make sure you are not pulling it tightly. Um, space your single crochet stitches out evenly as you go. Don't do anything too tight. And then work away along the bottom of the neckline, up the other side, and back across. And then slip stitch to join in the very first single crochet you made. And then just fasten off. And then again, if you want to add in a um, little piece of yarn here and sew it at the seam to keep your, your little roll held in place, you can do that as well. And then you just have to weave in any remaining ends with your needle. And that is it for this top. And I also wanted to mention that I steam blocked mine as well to give it a nice block. And thank you guys so much for watching this pattern tutorial. And I will catch you guys in the next video.